In episode five, you find out that, yes, Luffy and Garp do, in fact, have a past. When Luffy was a little boy, he used to call Garp grandpa. But it seems like the relationship deteriorated when Garp found out that Luffy had aspirations of becoming a pirate and Garp wanted him to become a Marine. And clearly that didn't happen. Even with their history, Garp continues to attack Luffy's ship. But what he didn't bank on was Luffy's elasticity helping him out in this situation. When Garp fires a cannonball at the Going Mary, Luffy uses his stomach and the elasticity to bounce it back, taking out the Marine ship and leaving it unable to do much. It allows Luffy and his crew to easily get away. Luffy's crew sails right into really dense fog, fog that Nami can't navigate through. And it's an issue because they know they need some kind of place to lay low for the time being so the Marines can't get to them. But Luffy doesn't care about navigation. He doesn't even care about the fog because his nose will be the guide. He starts smelling food, so he just directs the ship towards the smell. And what he finds is a restaurant in the middle of the ocean called Barati. Nobody on the ship really wants to stop because they feel like the Marines are only a few clicks away. But it's Luffy's ship. He is the captain. And all he cares about is getting a meal. When they enter Barati, they realize that this is a pretty fancy restaurant. But that concept seems completely lost on Luffy. It takes Nami paying the maitre d' off to even get a table. Their waiter comes up to him and his name is Sanji. Although, typically he isn't a waiter. He's one of the sous chefs. And a really, really talented one. He was forced to become a waiter for the day after he defied the head chef's orders and decided to cook stuff off the menu. They got into a bit of a spat, and it resulted in the head chef telling Sanji, get out and become a waiter. So when Sanji gets to the table, he's not really in a great mood. He took out some of that frustration on the way to Luffy's table when he saw two pirates about to fight. That's against the rules. So he kicked the crap out of both of them. Sanji's mood, though, does kind of change at Luffy's table once he sees Nami. He starts hitting on her real hard. Doesn't really seem like Nami's all that interested, though. As the group sits down and waits for their food, the Marines haven't forgotten about them. As they repair their ship, they know that they can't just let Luffy and his group continue on and lose sight of them. Kobe tells Garp that they can call an SOS, get some backup. But Garp says, no, I've got a better idea. And he goes into the captain's quarters. He makes a phone call to a guy named Mihawk. He used to be this massive bounty that was wanted. Until he started working for the Marines as a sort of bounty hunter. Mihawk is far and away the best swordsman in the world. This guy is a big ass sword and he knows how to use it. But unlike most of Mihawk's bounties, Garp tells Mihawk, bring this kid in alive. While Garp was making this phone call, Kobe was eavesdropping outside of his quarters. Now the name Mihawk doesn't really ring a bell for Kobe. So he asks Helmeppo about him. And Omepo fills him in on the fact that Mihawk was one of the seven warlords of the seas. Those seven warlords ruled the seas. They terrorized everybody they could. The world government could have went after them, but that would have meant an all-out war. Now, instead, they teamed up with them. The warlords would do the Marines' bidding, and in return, the warlords would be able to do whatever they wanted. When Kobe hears this, he is mortified, because it's not what he signed up for. He signed up to take down pirates not to join an organization that teams up with them. He decides to go confront Garp about it. And Garp admits that, yeah, there are different rules for different pirates. And he feels for Kobe, because he used to be Kobe. When he joined the Marines, just like Kobe, with simple ideals. But as he tells him, I had to adapt, because the world isn't a simple place. There are different rules for different people, and it's not fair, but it's the way it is. It seems like by the end of the conversation, Kobe sort of understands the situation that Garp has put himself in. As for Luffy and his group, at this point, they've gotten their food, they've eaten it all. But Nami wants to address the elephant in the room. The fact that Luffy's grandfather is an admiral in the Marines. Luckily for Luffy, he doesn't have to address it because the bill comes. And Luffy just writes an IOU. He gets a chuckle out of Sanji, but it doesn't get a chuckle out of the head chef, who storms out and demands to know who Monkey D. Luffy is. And a smiling monkey throws his hand up and says, I'm over here. The head chef demands to know what the meaning of the IOU is because in this restaurant, you pay after you eat. 
And Luffy explains that he's going to be king of the pirates. And once he gets his treasure, he's going to come back and he's going to pay that debt in full. But an IOU isn't good enough for the head chef. He plans to make Luffy pay off his debt right then and there by washing some dishes. Lots of dishes. As Luffy gets ready to clean up these dishes, Sanji storms back into the kitchen and demands that he be put back on the line. He tells the head chef I'm not a waiter. The two get into a screaming match and nothing gets resolved. But this argument piques Luffy's curiosity and he sees a plate full of food that wasn't touched. He's able to put two and two together that this was the meal that Sanji had made and the head chef didn't agree to. So he eats it and it's incredible. But he just kind of files that back in his head and he starts getting to work. And before you know it, only he and Sanji are there in the restaurant. Luffy compliments Sanji on the meal that he made. And Sanji can't believe that somebody ate it. He's just happy that somebody enjoyed it. Luffy asks him, why is the head chef making you wait tables? And Sanji said, because he's jealous. I should be running this place. And Luffy says, that's your dream then, to be head chef of this place. But Sanji says, no. His dream is to find a place that no one knows where it is. It's a place where all four seas meet. They call it the All Blue. Fish that haven't been discovered there. Spices that haven't been tasted. One day he vows to find it. Luffy's advice? Follow your dream. Don't let that old man get in the way. Stand up to him. But then their conversation gets interrupted when they start hearing some screaming. And it's a pirate who stumbles in and he's in desperate need of help. And Sanji jumps to it. Even though he's barred from the line, he's going to do it anyway. He's going to cook this guy some food. Help him out. Once the pirate finally gets some food in him, He explains to both Sanji and Luffy that he was drifting in the sea for about a week. And he thanks Sanji for saving his life. And that's when Luffy turns to Sanji and says, You know, you're a good guy and you're not happy here. You should join my crew. I mean, I'm serious. We're going to need a cook if we're going to find the One Piece. But the pirate stops eating right when he hears those words. He tells Luffy that his group was searching for it too. And his group was part of a mighty pirate armada. But ultimately, the Grand Line ruined them. They lost 50 ships, 5,000 men. He's the only one to survive. He warns Luffy, don't go to the Grand Line. Now, while Luffy's stuck inside, his crew is outside. And unlike Luffy, they're enjoying the night. They start drinking heavily, waiting for Luffy to come out so they can get on the seas and leave. But one person who isn't really enjoying her time is Nami. She still can't get over the fact that Luffy never mentioned... Garp was his grandfather. For Zoro and Usopp, it doesn't really seem that big of a deal, but for her, it is. And at one point she says, you don't get it. I can't get caught. Not when I'm so close. But she catches herself and doesn't finish that sentence. It says she asks the group who wants another drink. She gets up and she heads to the bar. And she does ask the bartender for more drinks, but she also asks the bartender, if I want to secure passage to the Konomi Islands, who would I talk to? And some guy walks up, he offers her a price, and she accepts it. She's planning on leaving at dawn, and she's planning on leaving by herself. When she returns, her and Zoro get into a drinking game where they learn about each other. They both think that they can figure out who the other one is, and what they learn is the only thing they really bond over is the fact that neither of them had many friends. The drinking game gets broken up when Usopp stumbles over with somebody he met at the bar. The guy's looking for Luffy, And right away, Zoro recognizes him as Mihawk. He ignores Mihawk's request to meet Luffy, and instead, he challenges him to a duel. It takes both Nami and Usopp completely off guard, and it even takes Mihawk off guard. But Zoro is dead serious. He recognizes the fact that Mihawk is currently the greatest swordsman in the world, and he wants to become that. And in order to do that, he's got to beat him at his own game. Ric Flair style. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Mihawk agrees to this duel, and they're going to do it at dawn. For Zoro, now he just has to prepare. He heads into the Go and Marry, but Usopp goes to grab Luffy, because trying to talk Zoro out of this is just not working, and they figure maybe Luffy can help. So Usopp interrupts the conversation between Luffy and the head chef at the restaurant where Luffy was giving it to him about the fact that he really should let Sanji go off and follow his dreams. Usopp ends up grabbing Luffy and saying we have bigger issues and explaining the situation. Nami especially is really, really adamant that he should not go through this duel. 
But Zoro explains that he made a promise to somebody a long time ago to become the best swordsman in the world. He's not planning on losing. And that's a dream that Luffy actually supports. So the next morning, when it does come time for the duel, Luffy and Usopp are right there by his side to support him. Nami, she went to go meet the guy about getting to those islands. Although, guilt got the better of her, and she decided to come back and support her friend. And her friend is not doing well. He couldn't even beat Mihawk with Mihawk using a very, very, very small sword. Mihawk did respect his courage, but he also thought he was an idiot. Zoro kept coming and coming, but each time, Mihawk would just kind of throw him to the side. Until finally, Mihawk stabbed him. He did respect him enough to let him die a death with his big sword, but when it came time to actually do it, he had a change of heart. He did slash him up, but he did so in a way that he didn't think would kill him. When Zoro hits the ground, Luffy rushes to his side, and Mihawk asks him, What is your goal, Monkey D. Luffy? And Luffy looks up and says, It's to become King of the Pirates. Mihawk lets him know that becoming King of the Pirates is a much more treacherous path than even defeating him. But he respects it. He then turns his attention to Zoro and says, It's too soon for you to die. Grow strong and come find me. And then he leaves. But that wound might have been fatal, because Zoro's bleeding out. Zoro vows to never lose again, and then he passes out. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it, smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry, it'll be up in a day or two.